In the last video, you got introduced to the functional group carboxyl. So the combination of hydroxyl, an OH, with a carbonyl carbon, a carbon double bonded to an oxygen, and mashed together into that carboxyl group. You got a chance to see a carboxylic acid, which is one variety of molecule that contains that carboxyl functional group, but there is other things that we can do with this carboxyl functional group. And in this video, we're gonna take a look at esters, which are one example of a molecule that contains it. So what we end up seeing in a carboxylic acid is that carbon double bonded to an oxygen, single bonded to an oxygen, and that oxygen is connected to a hydrogen. Now in an ester, I'm just gonna put an R group here so we understand that could be anything really. Um, what we have in an ester is still that carboxyl group, C double bonded to O, single bonded to O. But what's different is right here. What's connected to that carbon is an, or that oxygen is another carbon. Rather than ending at an H, it's actually kind of somewhat in the middle of the molecule because there's a continuation of carbons after this. That is what makes an ester. Now, in order to understand the naming system behind esters, it's kind of important to understand how they're formed. And to do that, we need to look at the reaction that is actually used in order to create an ester. So an ester is made by the reaction of two compounds. So it's made by the reaction between a carboxylic acid and an alcohol. So a carboxylic acid is basically going to lose this OH group and then this part, the CH3, CH2O, is going to then become connected to that carbonyl carbon. So you take a carboxylic acid, react it with an alcohol, and that will end up producing a, an ester. So this is the full reaction. We take that carboxylic acid we react it with the alcohol, and just like I had mentioned, you're gonna take that basically all the way to the O and connect it to the carbonyl carbon. You also get H2O as a byproduct. The H comes from your alcohol, the OH comes off of the carboxyl group, they combine together to make water, but you end up with this ester. The way that we name this ester, we first are going to have a name to represent the alcohol group. Since this is a two carbon alcohol group, we would call this ethyl. Oop, forgot my H. So ethyl and then to show the carboxylic acid group, we write its name next. So we would write ethyl ethan O8. So the O8 is how we show that it's an ester. The first part of the name represents the alcohol group. The second part of the name represents the carboxylic acid group. This is the only molecule we've seen so far that actually has a space. So there's a space between those two to represent alcohol group, carboxylic acid group. Because they're made by this reaction, you actually tend to get esters quite commonly in nature because carboxylic acids and alcohols tend to exist in very similar places. Esters tend to give things flavor. And so if you just have a combination of alcohols and carboxylic acids, they can react with each other to bring different flavors into things. This is why people who talk about like tasting wine might talk about how they smell raspberries or vanilla or all of these other things because what they're really detecting is the esters that are forming as time goes on and the alcohols and carboxylic, carboxylic acids react with each other. Same thing if you have like a sourdough starter. Sourdough starter is going to create carboxylic acids and they're going to create alcohol, those will react to make different esters, to bring different flavors. So you may end up producing bread that smells a little bit like oranges or lemons or 
all sorts of different things. And it's just because of the carboxylic acids reacting with the alcohols to make different esters inside of that uh, substance. Now, what I wanted to do next is give you a chance to see how we name some of these compounds. So we'll work through some examples, make sure you feel comfortable with the naming. Um, at a high school level, I would never expect anybody able to be able to name alkyl branches that are coming off of an ester. Really, I would just be hoping that you can name straight esters um, and be able to identify alcohol and carboxylic acid groups and apply the right suffix of oate. So let's take a look at how we would do that. So this will be the first example that we work through. And in this example, what you want to do is just identify the number or identify your side that is the alcohol group and identify your side that is the carboxylic acid group. So to identify your alcohol group, find that single bonded carbon, find the double bonded carbon, basically split between those two and whatever is attached only to that single bonded carbon, that is your alcohol group. And so that's gonna be the beginning of the name. The part that is connected to that double bonded oxygen, that is going to be your carboxylic acid group. And so that's gonna be the part that comes at the end of the name. So the beginning of the name here is gonna be based on these two carbons. We have two carbons in the alcohol group, so the start of the name is going to be ethyl for the two carbons. We then leave a space and we're gonna write the carboxylic acid part next. There's one, two, three carbons in it. So we would use prop to show that they're single bonded to each other. We're gonna go an, and then to show that it's an ester, we add O8. So this molecule that you see here is called ethylpropanoate, okay? So now that we see how to do this example, let's work through another. All right, so in this example, you may notice that I've kind of switched things around a little bit. And I did this on purpose so that we would have to identify the alcohol group without just thinking it's always on one side and the carboxylic acid is always on the other. Remember, identify your single bonded oxygen, make a dividing line between that and the carbon with the double bond. The part hooked to that single bonded oxygen, that part is your alcohol group. The other section that is connected to that double bonded oxygen, that is your carboxylic acid group. So now that we need to name this molecule, we know to put the alcohol first with a YL ending. So three carbons in this alcohol group, that's going to be prop to show it's in the alcohol group, YL, then we have finished naming our alcohol section. We leave a space and now we're going to write the carboxylic acid section. There's only one carbon in it, so we're gonna use meth as our prefix here. And then we're gonna add O8 to show that we're dealing with an ester. So this molecule that you see up here is called propyl methanoate. Okay. So now that we see how we name it from the structure, let's do a couple where you're given the name and we need to draw the structure. Okay, so here we have methyl butanoate. And it's totally up to you how you want to start, but I'm just going to start as the name is written. So I'm going to start with my methyl. So that means this is my alcohol group. So a one carbon group has to be attached to an oxygen. So that's what this beginning means, is that came from the alcohol, so that's what I have here. That is going to be bonded to my carboxylic acid group. So now I'm going to make my carbon double bonded to my oxygen, and because it says but, I know it has to have four carbons. So I have one, two, three, four. And then we just want to add the proper number of hydrogens on them. So I'm just going to give myself enough space. So we have CH2, CH2, CH3. And there you go. 
So methyl butanoate. And that's how we do this. Let's do one last example. And in this one last example, let's do it in a stick formula instead of this structure. Okay, so here I have the name propyl ethanoate. And again, take a look at the name. Beginning is going to be your alcohol group. The ending is going to be your carboxylic acid group. I should probably mention here too, it might be easy to get confused because you see that YL ending and that's the same as an alkyl. So it's important to recognize you're dealing with an ester when you start naming this and you do this by looking at the ending. O8 only shows up when we're dealing with esters. So as soon as you see that O8 ending, your mind's got to kick in a gear of alcohol carboxylic acid so that you can identify them. So let's start with our carboxylic or our alcohol group and then we'll do our carboxylic acid group second. So the alcohol group is going to have three carbons. So one, two, three. So those are my three carbons and they have to be connected to a single bonded oxygen. So another line to an O. So now one, two, three carbons. This is my alcohol group. But this has to be bonded to another carbon that is double bonded to an oxygen. That's what makes it an ester. But I need to have two carbons in this carboxylic acid group. And I already have one here. So if I just draw a line out, there's my second. So one, two. So here I have one, two, three, propyl, one, two, ethanoate. So propyl ethanoate. So that's all it is when it comes to naming esters. And it's a little bit different because of the way that they are formed. And, and that's what actually gives us this naming system. But like I mentioned, esters are in everything that you eat. They're what we use to give things flavor, whether it's artificial or they're also what give things their natural flavor. When you bite into something and it tastes the way that you remember it to be, when you bite into an orange and you know it's an orange, when you bite into a grape and know it's a grape, that's because when you bite it, the esters get released into your mouth. They make their way into your nasal cavity and you actually can recognize those molecules and your brain tells you what that flavor is. And that's all from this molecule, the formation of an alcohol and a carboxylic acid that we call an ester. So thanks for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in my next video.